what's going on guys? It's me, Train Man, and welcome back to the Zombie Train episode 200... Wait a minute, do I have this open? Episode 211, Going to California. Now this was a question posed by Taba Avenger in episode 194. Let me go bring that up real quick. Now, while I do that, you are seeing the sped up version of the footage that went into under construction. And that's because, I, A, I wasn't going to dig, dedicate four hours to route building. And B, I figured it was just an easy... Like, I still wanted to do this series. I want to do the other one because I want you guys' input. Uh, you know, I want everyone's input and everyone's help with building the Tolbert Peninsula. But, at the same time, I still want to make this. And I don't want to make this without video background. So you guys at least have something to look at if you didn't go watch uh, Under Construction. If you're watching this and you're wondering what the hell I'm building, go watch Under Construction. You can skip around, it doesn't matter, it's two hours long, I don't expect you to watch the whole thing. And remember that that is a very interactive program, I make it week to week, unlike everything else, except for the show, and the podcast, I guess. And I am very, very, very open to hearing what you guys have to say, especially if it comes to, hey, you should use this asset, or you should do this, or you should do that. It's, I, I want to hear it. I absolutely want to hear it. So, anyways. Zombie Train, episode 194. This was Signals. Now, uh, standards rain. <laughs> okay, did you guys ever make it out here to California? If so, what did you do? Oh, wow. Oh, wow. I know I've talked about California before, but let me preface, or let me start with the original reason we went to California. Now, when we went out west, we went to Portland, Oregon, because we had a spot in the engine shop at the uh, Oregon Rail Heritage Center, Oregon Rail Heritage Foundation, or what, what have you. So, this, uh, we made it there, right? We, we got there, and immediately, not immediately, but a few days after, we're waiting for Wyable to show up, as he's coming in as well, and we receive a message. Uh, are you sorry? No, Weibull does show up. And then the same night, we get someone who we only knew as the messenger. And he came from Seattle to hear to tell us that Seattle had been overrun by the Band of Guardians, the people that we had dealt with previously, and uh, and they were coming for Portland next. They were making their way down the coast, and their ultimate goal was to overthrow the uh, government slash U.S. Navy, which was based in San Francisco at the time, and thus be able to attain control of, well, a lot of very powerful warships and weapons and stuff like that, but additionally, a lot of, uh, you know, land, basically. They, they wanted to be able to take over essentially North America, which that's, I, I do, I was impressed by their, you know, by their tenacity, by their, uh, uh, by their aspirations. That's the word I'm looking for. Anyways, so our option, okay, uh, 3713, uh, 3713, 3254 at this point was not in runnable condition, kind of in pieces. Uh, 18, which is why Bolt's engine wasn't going to cut it. We knew that much. So we essentially jerry-rigged, uh, no, did we, we didn't even, okay, here's, yeah, that's right, we did, because we effed up the firebox. Uh, we jerry-rigged 4449 to burn coal, and that just meant tearing the burners out, installing a ghetto ash grate, and, uh, and ripping out part of the tender. And this was something that was done absolutely last minute, sort of, you know, under the watchful eye of the Heritage Center people, because they wanted to piece it back together in the end. But it was the, oh, this is our chance, this is the opportunity, this is what we have to do. We have to get down to warn them. Uh, the original goal was to get into radio range, but by the time we got over there, we realized we didn't actually have anything that could get that kind of range on it. And so... We ran all the way to San Francisco. Now, this was, this was, okay, that was a hell of a run, let me tell you. It was as fast 
as I'd probably go on in a locomotive, almost definitely. We are running fairly light, uh, you know, not not too much on the train. Just the engine and a couple of our a couple of the zombie train coaches. One of them, uh, one of them being the lounge, I think, just because we could spare it, and the diner. Or no, not the diner. The diner stayed behind. The the lounge, and the war room, I think, and then the. No, the storage didn't come with us. It was just a boxcar full of supplies that we took. And then our caboose. And we booked it. We ran, you know, 80 miles an hour at, you know, on average maybe, down to San Francisco. And we got there. Okay, and this this run, okay, let me, let me enumerate this run a little bit more. Because it was, you know, we have to get down to San Fran to warn the, basically the United States at this point. You know, I keep calling them the U.S. government or the U.S. Navy, but basically that's what the U.S. was. You know, we need to warn the U.S. that this is coming, that this this band of guardians is coming, and they are hell-bent on messing us, you know, at uh, basically looting and pillaging the entire city of uh, Portland. They've already done it with Seattle, and they're heading down towards... San Francisco, and they're coming for you. Now, this was, yeah, like I said, it was a hell of a run. It was very light. It was myself and uh, Weibold, and I think Emilio as well, because he was always my second. I think uh, Weibold second, uh, Chase, Chase's name. Weibold second was with him, and... They were, uh, it was the four of us and then a handful, uh, you know, a smattering of other personnel. Uh, and this was, this was the ride of a lifetime. Now, it takes some time. It took some time to get down. So, you know, by car in this day and age, just to give you a benchmark. So, from Portland... Uh, Oregon to San Francisco. That is a drive. Okay, it's suggesting flights, so you know it's far. That's a drive of ten hours. We did it in probably, or it's it's ten hours and twenty minutes. We did it in probably nine hours or eight. Uh, and it was, you know, it, thankfully it was short enough that it was not like. Uh, it wasn't like run all day or run all night, but it was, you know, okay, the messenger's here, we know what's going on, okay, we've got to get down there, we only have like a couple of days, tops. And there was, let's tear the end, let's tear the engine apart, basically. Uh, get it running, make sure it can run by any stretch of the imagination. And, and go. And go. And so... We went over, you know, and, and this is not an easy route to travel. It's, uh, you know, you're not going to go out to Bend to run on the flats. You've got to head down through Eugene, through Cottage Grove, through Rosenberg, and up through the mountains. And there are some tight turns up there. And so, which is, which is why doing a 10-hour trip by car in nine hours by train is all the more impressive. Uh, we we pushed it, and it's you know it is a miracle that we did not derail at any point or you know just fly off the track on a curve. It's you know part of me is still disbelieving that it ever happened, but we ran down again as fast as we could. There was a point at which. You know, we started to run a little hot, and it was, okay, should we should we dial it back and just take it easy, or, you know, what are we going to do? We, we've got to, we've got to be a little bit careful, right? And it was, no, we, we've got to, we've got to go. That's, you know, if we, we realized that if we got out there, and we got screwed, like if we got halfway there, and we could not go any further, that would be the end of it. There, there would, there would be no more... Uh, there, there would be no more attempts, basically. 
They, there wouldn't be anybody following us up. Hold on, I lost where I was. Oh, where am I? Uh, this line here. Yeah, it's a Rosenberg. Uh, and then down here, down here, down here. Oh, that's right, I missed that turn off. Then you go through Redding, Red Bluff, and then you're on the flats. And on the flats, we open it way up. Uh, we came through Sacramento like a bat out of hell. And if I recall correctly, we actually... Oh, did we? Okay, hold on. Let me check the track arrangement here because I'm... I'm misremembering. We went by something and I went, oh, was that Sacramento? Oh. We were we were just going. Oh yeah, there's no actual direct connection from there. So you go through here, you go through here. Am I looking at the right stretch of track? I'm lost. So glad this didn't happen when, we were, when it mattered. Uh, oh yeah, no. so you come down this way. Oh yeah, we managed to dodge Sacramento. Uh, so you come down through a little town called Woodland, and that's why I was like, oh, wait, was that supposed to be Sacramento? And we blasted through Davis. Uh, and then we were still on the flats, still on the flats. We headed towards, uh, we headed towards San Fran. Now, when we got in the city, things got a little bit hairy. This was, we made it across this bridge. This was, uh, this railroad bridge here. Again, kind of a sketch bridge. It was a double-track bridge leading in. And, let's see, let's look at this. Nope, it's just not showing me pictures today. Okay. But anyways. The, uh, when we made it across the bridge, there was a blockade. Uh, this was the military sort of safeguarding their areas. And they, they had secured, they had secured the area fairly well, you know, all, uh, San Mateo, uh, Oakland, San Francisco, Berkeley, Concord, Antioch, uh, all the way out there was already taken care of, and they were even, apparently they were, they were in Sacramento, and we just happened to miss them because we missed Sacramento. So we got, we crossed the bridge, and it was the question of how did you get this far, and who the hell are you? Uh, now this is when my history kicks in, with... Uh, oh, and I forgot his goddamn name again. It starts with a G. Uh, I, it's funny, I looked him up, verified who it was a little while ago. Uh, you know, originally. And it was, okay, listen, we're with, we're with the zombie train, you might have heard of us, we fought at Yonkers. Uh, we know such and such. We're, we're here with really, really important information. And at the, at the beginning it was like, what are these lunatics in a steam engine doing showing up here? Uh, and, there was there was the threat of it reaching this breaking point, until you know. Uh, I think, you know, Emilio sort of posed this huge big thing. You know, if if you let us through, what's the worst thing we can do? You know, get on. I don't care if you point guns at the back of our heads, but we're gonna run. We're gonna get into San Francisco, and we need to talk to the general, uh, or the admiral rather, and. And they got aboard, and we did, and we ran, you know, we ran all the way down around the tip of the bay through these, uh, you know, through, th through uh, Caltrain tracks, which weren't, uh, it's like, I wasn't sure if we should have been doing that, and we apparently kind of counted them up, but we got all the way up to... Uh, what was this? The, we got to the airport there. We got to San Francisco International. And that's when they were like, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Who's here? Okay, hold on. And it was right about that. Let's see, I don't remember the, uh, see this Treasure Island here. This is the, uh, no, where's the, where's the Navy base? Uh, oh yeah, this is the Coast Guard base. Anyways. We got that far, and then it was okay. Listen, we'll we'll send somebody to motor over you, and then and then we came up to this area where the tracks run right along the water, and they came up in a little boat. And so Weibold and I left uh, Emilio and Chase there with the engine to keep it from exploding. At this point, it had seen some crap. Uh, it was 
uh, we had really heated it up, and apparently we'd broken some stay bolts, and uh, th there was there was moderate damage on the engine from running it that fast, that hard for that long, and also burning coal. Even though we, you know, even though to our firemen's credit, they did their best at not, you know, overheating the thing. It, but that that turned into the Battle of Portland. We did manage to get there in time. We did manage to get them uh, informed, and then they sent up uh, basically the full strength of the D Corps, which is our dirigible corps, as well as a significant number of troops. They, you know, they they pulled a lot of troops out of. Uh, Sacramento and actually delayed the liberation of Sacramento, but we managed to save Portland. So that was that was my first trip to California. I did go back, but I can talk about that later. Anyways, train man out.